All right, so, Dev, look, like I told you when I posted on uh, Instagram and Twitter uh, a few weeks ago, bro, you are one of my all-time favorite student-athletes. I, I love all of the student-athletes that I've covered over the nine, ten years I've been doing this. You have always been one of my favorites because I felt like you always, even at an early age, understood your place in life in terms of being even more than just a football player. Where kind of did that mindset, where did that come from? Really, it started with my parents, you know, uh, installing me at a young age that, you know, school is very important. So they always taught me that that comes first. And, uh, you know, you always hear it, but I think my parents were, you know, a really great example of pushing uh, me at that. So when it always came to football, you know, I wasn't allowed to go outside and play with my friends and, you know, backyard football unless I got my homework done. And, you know, they looked over and it was good. So at a young age, I always understood, you know, that's that you can't play football without without school. When I first started covering you, right, you were out there at John Carroll. And, and this was when I was really getting started with what I did. And I saw your film and I saw your film and I was like, man, like this kid, I didn't even know where John Carroll was. But I was like, <laughs> yo, like this kid can ball. This kid can play. And I was looking, I was like, but he doesn't have the offers. He doesn't have the requisite stars and everything else that he deserves. And so that's one of the reasons why I took a, a specific interest in you. Then once you transfer to Bullis, you do begin to get all of those offers. You end up with, in, in, in what I, my memory bank in 20 plus offers or so, power five schools, everyone else is knocking down your door, but you made that decision that you just spoke to. You decided to choose education and to choose Harvard. How hard was that for you at the time? If it was hard. Oh man. Uh, you know, growing up, you always dream about playing Power Five and, you know, having a big crowd and big football school. So uh, when I first, you know, got all those offers in my head, you know, I was like, hey, uh, you know, Power Five, this is what I've always wanted. And then once the Ivies came in, it was just kind of, it was just kind of hard, man, because it was like, you know, the best of both worlds. But, you know, right. I talked to my parents and thinking about, you know, you can go to the NFL from anywhere if you're good. And I believed in myself as an athlete. And I just couldn't pass up that degree, man. You know, it's just, like I said, it's a 40-year plan or a four-year plan. You know, God forbid I, you know, went to a school and got hurt or, you know, didn't play and for whatever reason. And uh, just being able to say that I could have had a Harvard degree, I just couldn't couldn't have, have, have imagined that. So uh, it was a obvious decision for me, uh, you know, once I sat with my family and talked about it and prayed on it. And, you know, I uh, at Harvard. Uh, we didn't have the biggest crowds all the time. You know, Harvard, yo, that was something different. But, you know, every other <laughs> game, we, we didn't have the biggest crowds. And it, you know, kind of made me a little jealous of the Power Five conferences in their, you know, environment. But uh, over time, I just started to, to love it even more. You know, the grind of, you know, playing at an FCS school and, uh, you know, just being overlooked by the NFL. And like I said, when, when COVID happened and it fortunately gave me the opportunity to transfer to UVA, I was able to show that I could do the same thing, you know, at the Power 5 level, and uh, same with the XFL doing the same thing, and I think uh, over over the time that my skills have just proved that, you know, wherever I am, I can produce the same results, and uh, that's, you know, that's what I'm all about, consistency and hard work, and you know, no matter what, what level I'm at, I just, I just ball. We take a look at uh, this past weekend, there was another incident, we'll call it that, another unfortunate incident for Ja Morant, of course, of the Memphis Grizzlies. And I, look, I mean, I obviously I've never met him, I've never interviewed him, but I like Ja when, when, when other people talk to him. He seems like a very cerebral young man who has a lot of positive things going for him. And I look at you and I look at other student athletes, you talk about that decision to go to Harvard as a young black male who now has that degree under your belt, how important is you as a student athlete, now you're not a student anymore, but as an athlete to be a role model and to be someone that other generations can look up to? Uh, it's big, you know, as an African-American, a lot of times as a kid uh, growing up, all you hear about uh, as successful black men is either athletes or, you know, in the music industry. And so it's big uh, as, as us for black men to be role models in other ways. So, you know, part of me going to Harvard, too, is just being different and beating that stereotype of just being, you know, your average uh, power five or regular football guy, you know, trying to make 
to the NFL, make money, which I'm still trying to do, but at the same time, fall back on my Harvard degree uh, and, and just be a light for the next generation and show them there's other ways to be successful. And that's where it all starts. Um, you know, I think with the job Morant situation, the big thing about that is it's important to, to watch who you have around you and the people you have around you. Um, and I think, you know, he's a great guy. Like you said, I haven't met him personally, but from what I've seen individually, he's a great guy. I just think, you know, sometimes the people around him kind of influence him uh, in kind of a negative way a little bit. So I was blessed to, to grow up and have friends who kind of had the same dreams that I did um, and, and the same goals and ideals. And, uh, you know, it's important to keep those people around you to make the best decisions for your life because what's important to you may not be important to, to somebody else. That's, right. That's what my dad always tells me. And they may have, you know, a different different way about going about things that, you know, it may impact your life. And uh, you just got to be focused on yourself and, you know, just, just mind who you have around you and make sure that they they have the same aspirations as you do. That's right. That's right. That decision to go to UVA, Dev, I, I'm, I'm going to tell you, right? So I'm from, uh, I'm from Virginia. I'm from the, uh, the 757. And when I was in middle school and high school, UVA was my squad. So it was, it was always my dream to play football at the University of Virginia. I didn't quite make it there. I, I played, <laughs> I played D3 first and then I transferred to JMU. So I did play at JMU, but for you, once you got to UVA and you got to that Power 5 school, what was that like being a Cavalier? What was that experience like? Uh, it was great. Uh, I came into it. I think if you would have asked me coming out of high school, would I be nervous, uh, you know, going from Harvard, FCS to UVA? I probably would have said yes just because, you know, the jump. Mm -hmm. uh, but I actually wasn't nervous when I when I got there. And uh, For sure. me, I, it was more of determination and focus that, you know, I could, I'm going to show this league that I can do the same thing that I did at Harvard. And, uh, you know, <laughs> even though we were a super pass-heavy offense, we didn't run the ball that much, I still did what I – what I could with my opportunities, you know, um, like I said, consistency. And I ended up averaging uh, like 7.4 yards per carry. Uh, did really well when I got the ball. And, uh, you know, to me, it was just, like I said, when I got on the field, man, I wasn't thinking about the jumping competition or level. It was just ball is ball. And, uh, you know, actually it was, it felt kind of, kind of easier than it did at Harvard uh, somehow uh, to be yeah. able to make those big plays. And, um, you know, like I got to tell people at FCS, you know, Harvard and all that, there's a lot of dogs in that league, and I think people kind of, you know, overlook the Ivy League and, and things like that. So I was just Look. excited to get out there and prove to them that, you know, just because I come from the <coughs> Ivy League doesn't mean I can't ball. Because a lot of people didn't know about my, you know, yeah. having all those offers out of high school and how good I was. Right. So uh, it was I was glad that I could prove that to them. And uh, same thing with the XFL, too. Look, I, I, I agree with that as well. Like I said, I started my career at, at the D3 level. And that's what I would tell people, anybody that would listen to me, shout out Farum College. I was like, bro, like there are dudes here that can play. It's just that they might not, the defensive ends might be 6'2 instead of 6'6. Six, six. Right, and right. you know what I'm saying? The running backs might be 205 instead of 220. But if you play collegiately, you can play ball. It's just all about getting that opportunity. I, you talk about 2020, and, and I, I want to talk to you about something that is becoming more and more of a hot-button topic that you couldn't fully take advantage of, and that, of course, was the NIL process, as well as now with the transfer portal being wide open. What are your thoughts on those two those two entities and how they impact not only the collegiate level but also the high school level? Oh man, I think NIL is uh, it's, it's great. Uh, it can be. I think it can be a, a good thing and a bad thing in ways. I think it has positive and negatives. I think the positive is good because kids are able to you know make money off of their name that these colleges and these schools make money off of anyways. So it's a great way for the players to be able to. You know, and otherwise, other students may be able to get certain jobs and do things where, you know, a student athlete might not have that time. So it allows right. them to be able to make money off of, you know, their names and what they do. Uh, but I think one of the negatives of it is that it can be kind of distracting in a way, I think, and kind of, mm -hmm. you know, get to some players' heads. Uh, I can see that being a thing. Because, um, you know, I kind of I kind of uh, came out when it was just getting started. So I right. only got one year to experience it. So, you know. I had a couple of NIL deals, you know, nothing major. And now I'm seeing guys, you know, high school is worth millions of dollars, you know, it's crazy. So I, I can see how that could be a distraction and a good thing at the same time. Uh, but 
Also, the transfer portal, I think, is uh, I think the transfer portal is interesting. I think because uh, sure. I, I kind of have mixed mixed uh, feelings about it. You know, I went through the transfer portal. I was in there for about a week actually. I I had got a lot of schools that you know wanted me to come by, and I kind of you know was sold on the UVA early because of the you know the education and the master's programs sure. um, and being able to play Power Five. So I kind of rushed my my process in the transfer portal. You know, I, I one thing I I think I should have been more patient with that sure, um, but you sure. know everything happens for a reason and you know it's all on God's timing so I don't regret my decision but uh the transfer portal I think is interesting because you know you got some guys that really need it you know some guys who are you know talented and for whatever reason they may not be able to play at their school for something that's holding them back that they can't that's control right. um but that's right I also think that it kind of gives some guys like a way out whereas you know, I feel like before guys were like, hey, I'm going to grind this out, just get better and compete. And now guys can just say, hey, I'm not playing. I'm just going to transfer out, you know, and I think no. that it, it takes away that, that competitive aspect of it and, and kind of uh, growing as an athlete. But, yeah. I, but it can also be a good thing. Even growing as a man, right? I, I was speaking with a uh, with a high school coach about this, and he said that that's the biggest thing is that, Look, and, and, and for anybody listening, I am an advocate of NIL for student athletes. I'm an advocate for the transfer portal as well. But as someone who cares about the growth and development of young men in particular, just like we were just talking about, you got to go through adversity in order to be able to grow, right? You can't, you can't run. You can't transfer every time somebody is ahead of you on the football roster or in life. Is that correct? Right. Exactly. Exactly. That's correct. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So taking a look and, and really, again, that's a, an ideal segue. So you, you, you go to UVA, you have this outstanding season. You put up these big numbers, I should say, from a, a yards per carry perspective. What was that next step like? Because obviously, you know, you would love to be uh, be called in the draft and or to sign on as a UDFA. What was that step in the process like? Oh man, uh, just a, a roller coaster of emotions. I would say, uh, you know, I was getting called mm -hmm. for the draft from teams. You know, asking me, "Hey, what's the nearest airport to you so we can know to, <laughs> you know fly you out?" And uh, wow, you know, talking to my agent, my previous agent. Uh, just telling me, hey, I'm here, you know, late rounds, good priority free agent. So, you know, he told me, you know, I was good. So I was just, you know, at the draft draft day, just waiting on the third day and I uh, had my phone next to me and just waiting for a call. And, you know, that didn't come through. And, uh, you know, I, I just kind of – I wouldn't say I was sad. I was just kind of confused because, you you know, you hear you get all this attention beforehand and then, you know, afterwards nothing. So – um, agent told me that I got the opportunity to go to uh, the rookie camp with the Kansas City Chiefs, and yeah, you know I was excited for that. Um, and I competed well there, and I had a great time. You know, I think that they just had a lot of you know a lot of running backs in the room. Uh, you know, including the Pacheco, the draft pick they had, and you know he's a great <laughs> talent. He's a great talent. Uh, you know, but still, you know, I I, I kind of when it comes to things like that and guys and drafting, I pay attention to it. I go into the room. Just compete. I don't really care who who in the room, but uh, they just you know had a, a, their guys already, and you know I kind of understood that, uh, and and I just still saw it as an opportunity to compete, and you know just see what it's like and learn, and just have you know the opportunity, uh, which was great for me, and you know after that I was just kind of you know staying in shape and just waiting for my agent to to let me know what's going on, and I, I he had told me about a lot of opportunities, but one of the things that happened was. Um, I got a call from the XFL uh, asking me mm -hmm. if I wanted to join them. And I was kind of, you know, in, the, in my head, I'm like, ah, you know, I'm still trying to chase this NFL thing right now. So sure. I'll let you guys know. Um, and, and as time went on, you know, I'm just talking to, talking to teams and, and, you know, I'm talking to my agent and nothing's really solidified. And, it's you know, it's been a, quite a minute since I played ball at that point. So I called right. the XFL back and I was like, hey, you know, I uh, – it's probably best for me just to stay in shape, right, and and play ball. You know, ball is no matter what level it is, ball is fun to me, and I love it. So, uh, just having that opportunity to play at the XFL, which is professional as well, was a blessing. 100%. So I called them back and was like, "Hey, let's do it. You know, let's let's. I want to play for the XFL, and you know, they they uh sent me out to a showcase, and I did great at the showcase, and 
you know, draft day came around and Orlando picked me up and that was a blessing. Had a great time there. Um, was able to ball out and uh, I was just excited. And, you know, if I still don't get an NFL opportunity, excited to go back to the XFL. When we, when we look back at, again, that initial draft day and then, because look, I, I, I believe that this is going to turn out to be just a beautiful story one way or the other again because you've got the degrees behind your belt and like I said from the first time that I saw you you're an amazing talent so I think that this is going to turn out to be a beautiful story one way or the other but when you look back at that draft day and you look back days after that Chiefs camp what was the lowest moment what what, what was the lowest moment and how did you pick yourself back up from that lowest moment because that is what helps other people get through whatever it is that they're going through. Yeah, I'll, I'll say I'll never forget this. Um, I was on the bus after the after the Chiefs rookie mini camp. Uh, you know that being my only opportunity, uh, and I just remember sitting on the bus thinking to myself, like, man, I didn't make it. You know, I uh, I wanted to call my mom. I couldn't even call her. You know, I just I text. I had to leave her a text say, hey, I I, I didn't make the team. And, um, you know, on the bus, I, I, I cried to myself. You know, I, I, I'm not a very emotional person, but it was important for me to pick myself back up. So after that, I got home and, you know, I just thought to myself, you know, I'll never have that feeling again. And, you know, I'm going to work mm -hmm. hard to, to, to make sure that that never happens again. And, uh, you know, part of it, too, is, is being younger and excited for those opportunities and not fully understanding that some things are out of your control. Um, that's right. And that's one of the things I kind of had learned from that. And uh, as just getting older is that sometimes you can, you know, you can be more talented than some other guys. And, you know, That's they right. might just get better opportunities than you just because of who they know or, you know, maybe they went to a, a bigger school or got more, you know, just opportunities than you. So um, that was one of the things that I kind of had to learn myself. But also it just taught me to to ignore all that and just just work hard, you know, um, being a guy that that's, I feel like this has been overlooked. Uh, growing up, you know, I always had to move because I've moved probably about 10 times in my life. And each time I've moved, yeah, each time I've moved, I've had to go on a new team who's already had their guy and kind of just prove, <laughs> just prove that, you know, I can, I can play. So, uh, just, just growing up and doing that kind of taught me as well that, you know, sometimes you just got to duck your head down and work, you know, regardless yeah. of what happens because some things are out of your control. Um, so, that was probably my lowest point, just being on that bus and, and you know, all my dreams was right there. Uh, and, it, and it didn't really help that they won the Super Bowl, too. Um, but, <laughs> but, <laughs> hey, it didn't help that you would have been playing with Patrick right. Mahomes and you know, Travis Kelsey and stuff, you know what I'm saying? Right. right, yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, nah, it was, uh, you know, yeah. it was a, I think everything happens for a reason, and God put me in that position just to teach me things. And, you know, same like now, I think, uh, you know, um, I think God is, has a has a way for me, and I and I know I'll, I'll make it to the NFL. I know I'll play. I just you know just yeah. gotta trust His timing. I, look, and, and and you you speak about the XFL, bro. I think, and you can tell me. I believe that the XFL this season exceeded all expectations. You know what I'm saying? Like like you're obviously you're 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 20 years my my junior in this regard, but for people like me like we've seen the earlier you you saw it as well, but we've seen the earlier iterations as an adult and it was like, "Oh, well this it's this gimmick league. Well, it's this, it's that." Like I feel as though the product that you all put out on the field this year led by Dwayne Johnson and his uh and I, I'll call her his ex-wife, but it's his business partner, led by what it is that they set up I felt like this was a successful product that you all put out on the field what were your thoughts on the overall product of the league oh yeah I agree when I uh when I first got into it you know I, I had questions myself I didn't know how organized it would be um yeah but they really they really surprised me you know when we first got there everything was really official really set up um it was you know we stayed in the hotel the whole time food was paid for uh and and everything was just kind of really organized you know it was never Hey, did you guys hear about this? When is this supposed to happen? It was, they're reaching out to you, boom, boom, boom. This is going to happen. This is when it's going to happen. And it happened. Uh, and it just really uh, surprised me, too, uh, you know, how they went about getting the talent. You know, I feel like that they they made it their priority to have exciting football and exciting players. So they did their 
their best to recruit guys that they know would, would make plays. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys came from the NFL. A lot of guys uh, were previously in the XFL that were stars. And, and the coaches are big name, oh, you yeah. know, Hall of Fame type guys, a lot of them. Oh, yeah. My coach was Terrell Buckley. You know, you had Hans yeah. Ward at San Antonio. You know, a bunch of a bunch of coaches that are that are, uh, you know, a lot of people know. So uh, just being able to be coached by those guys as well was was something that was incredible. I feel like uh, a lot of the times that coaches that you get coached by, you know, may not have been, you know, as big as players. You know, me being able to be coached by Terrell Buckley, you know, that was that was pretty yeah. exciting. You know, and uh, being able to build a relationship with him, not as just a as a guy that's like, hey. You know, you played in the NFL. That's crazy what it's like. But he's my coach now, you know. So I'm learning things from him uh, and all the guys. And, you know, Coach Robert Ford, who was the offensive coordinator, he coached at Dallas. You know, he uh, he coached a lot of, of great football players, uh, Emmitt Smith. So being able to be coached by him and a guy that has coached Emmitt Smith, a great running back, was was, wow. was great to me. And I think I learned a lot in that league. Uh, and, and, and just being a professional athlete, uh, it taught me a lot. And – uh, I think the XFL is if they keep going in this route, it'll be around for a long time. And I think they did a great job. Um, and, you know, the championship was just this pe previous weekend. And right. the amount of yeah. people I saw watching it, it was like, man, this is great. You know, I feel like this what we're putting on TV is, is entertaining. It's good football, good quality football. And a lot of guys are getting opportunities from it. I agree. I agree. I, you know, I, I, I look again the first time that I, saw your graphic uh you know in, in the orlando jersey i got geeked i was really pumped up about that and then when seeing that you were being successful i got really excited about that but then to be able to watch uh the game in which like your family was there and i believe like your aunt put together a video and everything like that like i saw that and and just i couldn't help but to smile again because of the personal love and professional love that I have for you. So what was that moment for? What, what Was that your best moment of the season? What was? Yeah, I will say uh, definitely just having my family there, man. You know, they're, they're my number one supporters. And, you know, people like you who, you know, seen me grow since day one when I didn't have anything. Um, and, and, and that was just the biggest thing for me because, you know, when, when everybody else doesn't believe in you, your family does. So every time, you know, they're there, it's, it's important for me that, you know, I just show out and, and show them that, hey, you know, I'm still here playing for y'all. And, uh, you know, even if I wasn't playing, they still show that love. And that's just family um, just being there for you. And uh, just, just seeing them there just gives you a different level of comfort and uh, being able to, to just play while your family is watching. It's a blessing, you know. It's a, yeah, a blessing I feel like a lot of people take for granted because not everybody, you yeah. know, may have that support system and their family there watching them play and guiding them in the way that my family has guided me. So I'm truly blessed for it, man. So definitely just seeing my family after the game, I say that's, that's you know, season highs for me, just being able to, you know, go out to eat with them and talk to them about football and life and how everything's going. It's, it's just a blessing. We we always hear, especially especially in football, but really in every aspect of life, you you talk about trust the process, trust the process, and that is the idea of if you do everything to the best of your ability, eventually you'll continue to get there, wherever that there is. You take this uh the, this this journey here. You play in the XFL. You star in the XFL in many regards, and then you get that camp invite from the Commanders. What was that like? Oh man, it was great. Uh, getting that phone call, man, it, it, it was just exciting. You know, just having another opportunity to show them what I could do, and um, you know, talking to my agent about multiple opportunities, and uh, just just excited that hey, my dream is still alive, and you know, playing in the XFL, and you know, Kansas City Chiefs rookie minicamp was my only opportunity out of college, so. Uh, just having more opportunities than what I already had after playing in the XFL, it was, it was, it was an amazing feeling. And uh, the camp was great, you know, uh, being able to compete and show the, the NFL coaches what I could do at the commanders. And, uh, you know, they, they they really like what I do. You know, EB is the new offensive coordinator, Eric B. Enemy. So yeah. he saw me, he liked me, he liked me at the Chiefs camp. So he was like, hey, let's bring him over to Washington too. And, you know, I was able to compete and they're still, you know, evaluating us and evaluating film and, um, just, you know, hopefully I get a call from them, uh, but, sure. but if not, you know, on to the next opportunity, like I said, everything happened for a reason. And, uh, you know, just, just being able to, to, to have that opportunity again was a blessing for me. 
being from the DMV and again playing your high school ball here was was that surreal to to have on commander's gear and to be on a professional field here in the DMV? Oh yeah, I felt like I was you know, back home, uh, some sort, you know, I'm originally from Alabama, but I'm lived in Maryland for a long time. And, uh, you know, just being able to kind of be back in the DMV, it felt like home and felt like I was just playing at John Carroll again, you know, just being able to, to ball in front of my friends, you know, I knew guys at the camp, uh, was able to, to talk to them and, um, you know, all the people I was familiar with, like I said, got to see uh, some family outside of the camp and, uh, just being back just felt great, and uh, it just made me want to go even harder. Um, just, you know, hopefully I could could be signed by this team and, you know, play back in the DMV where I know a lot of people and I know that they love football. Um, like I said, so hopefully I get the call back and the opportunity to play for the Commanders. That's what's up. That's what's up. And like you said, wherever your next step is, it will be the right step because those steps, <clears throat> those steps are ordained. I'll get you out of here on this, Dev, because it, one of the themes of this conversation, if it, if it's not football and it's not education, one of the major themes has been your family. I'm a huge family man myself, not only with my wife and my son, but with my mother and my sisters and everything else as well. Obviously, over the years, I had an opportunity to meet your parents. I think that they are wonderful people. I know that you have a sister as well. What does that family mean to you, and how have they helped to get you through every step of life? Oh, yeah, family, my family is everything to me. Um, you know, when I'm going through things, uh, you know, down about some things, and um, they just keep me keep me sane and keep my keep my head straight and you know like I said it's a blessing to have them because a lot of people don't have that that outlet and and people to look out for them like that so uh, I think family is is definitely loved ones is the most important thing to me you know that's, that's two things you can't get back is is time you know loved ones so just being able to spend time with them and and enjoy every moment um, you know while we're still all here is a blessing because every day is not promised. And, you know, just got to live by such and, and just pray to God, you know. So uh, just just I'm blessed to have my family, man. They're, they're everything to me. You know, I don't make a decision without going through them. Um, and, you know, even though I'm still I'm grown now, or I like to say, you know, some guys, eyes, I'm still young, still a young kid. But, um, you yeah, know, I, I still make my decisions even even through them. You know, sometimes I call them. Hey, dad, what do you think about this? Hey, mom, what you think about this? Because, you know, your parents and, and the people that love you never, never stray you in the wrong way. Uh, so I'm just blessed to have them, man, and, and happy that, you know, I have you too. You know, you, you like I said, you've been there since day one. Uh, you know, we've seen each other's growth, you know, um, so we've had each other on the back. And, you know, I was when, yeah, you, when you, you know, reached out to me about doing this, man, I was so excited to you because it's like, man, it, it felt like the good old days. So I appreciate you yeah, and, and everything that you've done. No, well, look, man, I, I I appreciate you, and I thank you for saying that. And uh, and look, it, it it's a continued steps forward for both of us, bro. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Let's, let's do it, Devin Darrington from John Carroll to Bullis to Harvard <laughs> to UK, the XFL, the NFL, no matter where it is. Oh, my brother, it will be a path full of success. Again, thank you so very much for taking a few moments with me. Yes, sir, of course. Thank you. Ricardo Report, bruh.